Here's to whiskey kisses, the peaty taste of sin. Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome back to Drinking Out Loud, where I am Adam Bradshaw, and I'm about to uh, unbottle this lovely Glen Moray heated single malt. So, this is uh, being featured as part of uh, a tasting which we recently put on. Uh, at the time of recording is happening tomorrow, so I don't, I don't know how it went, but uh, I'm sure it, I'm sure it was good. And this is one of uh, very few whiskies that I actually have tried before um, uh, before releasing them here at the uh, at this uh, at this edition of the new whiskey showcase. Um, and I normally try and try everything, but sometimes you just get some exquisitely good deals. And that's kind of the theme to this month's tasting is like particularly good deals. That's what we're starting off from. Um, but this is a particularly good deal. And the reason I've tried it before is because it is a staple at British supermarket shelves. And uh, when I visited home two years ago now, which was the first time in over a decade that I'd been home, I think, um, this was the whiskey I bought for myself when I visited the supermarket on that first evening, and a whiskey that I enjoyed throughout my stay at my parents for the next uh, 10 days. And it's great. Um, and I, I'm very excited that it's finally landed here in BC. Glen Moray is a great distillery, and it's a distillery that has found itself at... Uh, at an interesting point, because it is now considered to be one of the best value whiskies. Uh, and I, I don't mean any disrespect when I say this, but it is a value whisky. It's not very expensive at all, and there's a reason it's popular in the supermarkets in the UK. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's a, there's a time and a place for every whisky, and hopefully at the tasting, which um, where we're tasting all these blind, hopefully a bunch of people will be very surprised to find out how much of a value whiskey this truly is. Um, and I'll tell you right now, actually, the price, it's $66.87 for this single malt, which means because it's 10% off right now, it's $60.18 for a single malt peated Scotch whiskey um, from Speyside region. So yeah, that's it's quite something, isn't it? Uh, so let's, let's have a look what it says on the box here. Peated Classic is a unique whiskey which offers a twist on the traditional Glen Moray flavour and character. Subtle flavours of vanilla and oak merge with peat smoke to provide a very different and intense Glen Moray taste sensation. And yeah, pronunciation. Good point. Uh, so some of you might be cringing at the fact that I say Glen Moray. From what I can tell, it can be said Glen Moray or Glen Murray, but really Glen Murray is just Glen Moray in a Scottish accent. Um, I believe this is Moray. And but uh, Murray, Moray, same, uh, yeah. I think it says Moray, personally. That's how it looks like it's spelt. That's how I've heard some Scottish people with slightly less of a heavy accent uh, say it. So I'm going with Moray. If you prefer to call it Murray, power to you. I ain't going to stop you. Um, we've had a lot of Glen Murray um, recently uh, in the SNWS. Uh, it's one of the distilleries that we get quite often in the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. And in fact, it's, I would say, 99% of the time that I have drunk a Glen Moray, it is from the SNWS. Part of the reason behind that is they were actually owned by the same company for a brief period, so they got a lot of stocks. Um, it was started as a distillery way back in um, 1897, I think my notes say. I can't read my writing. Um, but it was actually... so. The late 1890s were a big, massive boom period for distilleries in Scotland. A lot of my favourite distilleries started back then. Ardmore is in uh, 98, I think. So is um, Ben Romack. Um, a huge boom in that region, in that industry. And most of them closed down a few years later. Glen Moray even closed for a few years, um, but came back again, thankfully. Um, but it was actually, it didn't start from scratch. It was actually a brewery before it was a distillery. It was called West Brewery. Now that founded in 1828. Um, yeah. Um, I mentioned it was the same owners of SNWS for a while. For a brief period, the SNWS was weirdly owned by Louis Vuitton, Moe Hennessy, which is still weird to think about. I, I dodged most of that period, I think. But um, so was Glen Moray. Neither of those two things are true anymore. The SNWS is privately owned again. Thank Lord. It's um, it's uh, owned by the club for the club. And Glen Moray is um, now owned by La Martiniquez. Martiniquez. I actually just watched a video on how to pronounce that. I think it's Martiniquez. Martiniquez. Um, which I, but apparently just means from Martinique. Um, 
<laughs> Probably should have guessed that. Um, but yeah, another, another company um, that now owns Glen Moray and has really pushed it as a single malt in its own right, which is great. And I I enjoy Glen Moray uh, because they they aren't afraid to try new things. They were one of the first distilleries to try white wine casks. Uh, I believe they're the first distillery in Scotland to put something in a cider cask as well. Um, I had absolutely no idea that they made a peated whiskey um, because all of the whiskey I'd had was from the SWS and was unpeated and at that point. And so when I saw this on the shelf after when I was incredibly jet lagged and uh, at Morrison's in Staveley in, in Derbyshire, I was confused and I thought delirious um, to see a Peter Glenmore and I just had to try it and I was very pleasantly surprised. So let's see if I'm as pleasantly surprised today when I'm a little less shocked and a lot less jet lagged. Um, it is of course from Elgin, um, heart of Speyside. I just I just can't believe it's only like 60 bucks. Was it $60.18? Like, that is actually, I think, I think it was like 30 or 40 pounds in the UK. So it's about the same price here as it is in the UK. The next off. All right. I like how it instantly fogged up there. That's cool. All right. So from what I remember, it wasn't heavily peated at all. It was, it was a it was a light a light splash of the uh, splash of the smoke. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting today. It almost on the nose feels like a blended malt, where it's like twenty percent peated whiskey and eighty percent unpeated, like some somewhere around that ratio. But I think what really caught me before was there's an interesting sort of savory note, almost sort of not marmitey, but like. You know, yeasty, salty. Hmm. Yeah, the peat that is hard to come by on the on the nose is easier to find on the palate, but it's still not aggressive by any stretch of the imagination. It might be if you are used to buying whiskey entirely from the supermarket, and this is the first time you've had anything with the p word in it. Um, let's see what the taste and official taste notes say. It probably really ramps up the smokiness, and it's not actually that smoky. Hidden beneath a subtle light golden color is a rich seam of smoke. Yeah. No. Um, nose, layers of peat with a background of vanilla, tangy rhubarb, and hints of leather. Taste, instant peat smoke, lightly spiced with creamy vanilla. Finish, long, sweet, and spicy. Yeah, if you've never had a peated whiskey before, this might be considered quite smoky. For anyone who's ever had a uh, Kalila, this is not. <laughs> doesn't mean it's bad. And I actually really like this, again, on second try, especially taking the value into account. Next day, budget whiskey. It's 40% ABV. It's, it's a, the legal minimum it's allowed to be. They're not, they're not making it out to be anything it's not. It's chill filtered, almost definitely. It may even be coloured. In fact, I'm willing to guess, looking at that colour, it's probably coloured. And that's okay. There's a time and a place for everything especially when it's only 60 bucks. This is a really damn good entry-level whiskey, and I'm really intrigued to see what people think of it when it's completely presented blind and have, no one has any idea what they're tasting. Hmm. With me? Yeah, I'm happy. I am happy with this whiskey. Apparently, this was actually launched way back in 2015 in the UK and has been a staple, and it's, I'm surprised that I didn't hear about it until I visited in 2022. Um... Yeah, it's great. I, I imagine this is probably a staple in pubs across Scotland as their malt of the month, where they do like, you know, a double for five quid or something. Um, I don't know what the prices are these days. I think that's what we used to sell our malt of the month for at the, at the Royal Oak. Um, yeah. Um, it is. Um, so La Martinique is um, the creators of the Label 5 um, blended whiskey, which is super popular across mainland Europe. And I actually tried for the first time in December. I, I got a little bottle of it from the corner store in Belgium just to see what it was like. So I've, I've talked about uh, Label 5 quite often. I've never tried it because it's not available in... I don't think it's available in the UK. Uh, it's certainly not available here in Canada. And it was... Not great. <laughs> if you're gonna have Glen Moray, have the single malt. Don't don't bother with the blended stuff. Label five was, I mean, maybe I was expecting too much from it. It is a just a budget blend after all. But 
if you're going to spend money on a blended whiskey, there are better blended whiskeys, in my opinion, than, than Label 5. Just go for the good stuff. Get a Glen Moray straight off the bat. It's only $60. Outstanding value. Not the best whiskey I've ever had. Not the best whiskey I've had in the last hour, to be frank. But probably the best $60 whiskey I'll have today. Actually, the next whiskey I'm about to record is $60 too. So, mm. Although it's cheating. That's a, it's a smaller bottle. So that doesn't count. All right, Slanch of Art, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you are interested in coming to uh, one of our tastings where we showcase whiskeys just like this and many other very interesting whiskeys that uh, um, you'll see across a series of videos that are being launched right now on YouTube or here on Drinking Out Loud, you can come to our next Whiskey Arrival Showcase, um, and that is on Thursday, April 21st. And you'd think... With the amount of times I've said that today, I would have remembered it. But yeah, Thursday, April 21st, uh, come along to the next uh, brand new whiskey showcase uh, where we'll be showcasing brand new whiskeys. Funnily enough, that's what we do. Slanchavar, I'll see you on the next episode. Cheerio. Find your way home.